Hello everybody, I'm here at last. I'm Sophie from The Makers and um, thank you all for joining me. I know you've all been waiting in the live chat, sorry about that. <laughs> um, this is my first live stream, so please be nice to me. Um, and we've got Emma here and Alicia to help me, so thank you guys for supporting me through this. And um, I'm just going to have a quick little check on the chat and say hello to everybody. Oh my goodness, you've all been chatting away for ages. Hi Faith, hi Mo, Helen, Pamela, Jane, Alicia, Laura, Donna. Wow, loads and loads of people, Rachel, Emily, and just want to say a massive thank you to you all for um, coming and listening to me talk about making mics. And oh, Maya Line, hello Maya Line, hope you're having a nice summer. And Jackie, hello, <laughs> just up the road. Oh. So I've got Emma, um, she's going to send any questions that you've got to me during the live stream. And um, yeah, here it goes. I'm sure there'll be a few, a few bloopers for you guys to laugh at so <laughs> so um we're making mice today we've done a mice tutorial before on um the creative show so this is a, a one that's going to stay on our website so you can all make lots and lots of mice so here we go with the mice we've got lots and lots of different types um, of mice you can make we have loads of kits if you're into mice I think I've counted um, five different mice kits that we've got so you can um, this was our first kit the the three white mice then they turned into Christmas mice as well um, we also do door mice there's a little harvest mouse with his prehensile tail and um, lately we started to accessorize them a lot more. So we've got um, the, the mother mouse and child. So holding a little, a little heart. And mum with her bobble hat and her reading glasses on and a little scarf. So we've got free tutorials how to make um, glasses, bobble hats, scarves, waistcoats in case your mouse needs to go skiing. Um, and you can make the sunglasses with the glasses tutorial as well. He doesn't want, seem to be wearing a lot of clothes for skiing, it has to be said, he might be a bit chilly. So we've got lots of um, mice and the latest thing that we want to um, share with you guys is our um, celebrity mice competition. So that's going to launch on Twitter. Um, this is our Twitter name, at the makers. Um, we've, we're getting our Twitter page up and running and we want you guys to um, post your mice to us on Twitter. Tag us with at the makers, um, hashtag makers mice and um, tag the celebrity that you've made as well. So I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that later, but um, we're also going to post full details on our Facebook page so you can look out for them there. If you're not on Twitter, don't worry, we're going to um, allow you, you can email them to us or send them to us on every one of make and we'll post them on Twitter for you. So how's that for customer service? So without further ado, um, I'm gonna I'll show you how to make some mice and you can think about which celebrities you'd like to make. <laughs> so what you need for the mice, you've got your pipe cleaners. Um, you need two pipe cleaners. We do do them in lots of different colors as well. So if you want to make um, other colored mice, we've got beige, um, dark brown and pink and that we sell in a um, mice mix pack so you need two pipe cleaners per mouse and one of them you need to cut in half so I'm going to cut that now just roughly you also need some um, wool so for my mouse I'm going to use some of our Australian merino wool it's a really lovely soft wool we sell this as um, bleached Australian merino too if you want a really really white mouse this is our natural um, Australian merino you'll also need something for the ears so this is our flesh pink it's a lovely natural pink and um, we'll be using that for the ears the nose of the mouse is actually just a bit of the pipe cleaner showing through um, but if you if you find that you lose your nose you can also use that flesh pink for the nose and then you just need some of our 
glue in eyes as well. So these are four millimeters, but you can use five millimeters or three millimeters as well. Um, a couple of tools that I really like to use with these mice are, this is our clover, um, it's not our clover tool, but we do have the clover tools as well. This is our, just our normal three needle tool and it's got our twisted, very fine needles in. So that's the 42 gauge. I don't know if you can see them there. But I absolutely love those for finishing uh, surfaces really finely. So I've got quite a fluffy mouse here who I'll stab into later with that. Um, and you need some glue for the eyes as well. Something with a little fine nozzle works really well. Oh, <laughs> try not to let too much come out. Okay, so you've got all your bits ready. There we go. Got all your bits ready. And the first thing that you need to make is two sets of arms and legs, which will look like this. So it looks a bit like a cotton bud or something at the moment. Um, and we're going to then turn that into this stage, which is the uh, mouse lollipop stage or mouse kebab, somebody um, once said. <laughs> so we're going to be making two pairs of arms and legs. So if you take your um, shorter pipe cleaner, the one that you cut in half, we're going to use one of those and fold the edges in like that. So they pretty much touch each other in the middle looks like a staple. Now those two bends, one at each end, is going to be your hands or your feet. So when it when they're hands I tend to leave a little bit less of the pink showing so that it's like a little kind of um, paw for the hand and for the feet I leave a little bit extra, um, oh where's the camera, there we go, leave a little bit extra showing so that it um, becomes a longer foot. I don't know how well you can see that. So I'm going to turn these into the legs, first of all. So I'm going to take some of my wool. It's got a bit of a grain to it, a little bit like paper. So it, it tears more easily in one direction than the other. I don't know if you can see, but you can sort of see the fibers are in this direction. So I'm going to tease a little piece off there, like that. And that's quite, it's actually quite a wide piece. So I'm going to just break that in half again. Like that. So if it's still a little bit thick, just tease those fibers out. It's much, much easier to start off with a smaller piece for your arms and legs. Otherwise you end up with these great big fat um, sausages straight away and it's going to get out of control. So start off with a nice thin piece. And it's better to build up a few layers back and forth along the leg as you work than to um, do it all at once. So we're going to build up a few small layers. So I take my wool in one hand, my pipe cleaner in the other. And I'm just going to let the wool catch onto the pipe cleaner. Now it's got those lovely fluffy fibres on the pipe cleaner. They're going to hold the wool onto the pipe cleaner as you turn the pipe cleaner the wool catches on can you see it's caught on there and it starts to wrap around as you turn so I'm just going to build up a few of the smaller layers so these thinner layers and I'm working my way from one end to the middle and then I'm going to carry on from the middle and go out to the other end but stop before the um, end there. So I'm leaving a little foot at the end. So just keep turning that pipe cleaner. Always turn in the same direction. So for me, I'm going so that the pipe cleaner is turning away from me. If you start turning it in the opposite direction, your wool all unravels, which is very annoying. So I'm tur keep turning it and I'm keeping a lot of tension on that wool to keep it nice and tight. So I want these arms to be a little bit thinner at the wrists, so there and there, and a little bit thicker in the middle, so he's got a little bit of like muscle tone to him. So I'm just building that up now, going back and forth, and it's about, you want to build up to about a centimetre thick in the middle. So nearly done there. 
and then you break your wool if you've got some um, excess wool and the trick with this if I left that now it would all come unraveled but if I wrap that and just keep going right to the very very last few fibers those last fibers are going to hold all the others in place so there you have one set of mouse legs doesn't look like it quite now does it so I'm just going to show you that technique again with the arms so we're folding the edges in give it a little pinch so that the arms don't have a sort of hole in them the hands don't have a hole and then we're just going to um, start that wrapping technique again so laying the wool against the hands up against the arms or pipe cleaner turning the pipe cleaner letting the wool catch on keeping some tension on the wool with one hand and turning the pipe cleaner with the other and just working our way back and forth so if you come to the end of a piece of wool always just keep turning to the last few fibers and then you can take a new piece of wool and start that again so again just building up a bit thicker in the middle and these are my hands so I'm going out a little bit closer to the edges on this make the hands a little bit smaller than the feet I love how this wool just grips onto the pipe cleaners If you get into wire armature, we, we have lots and lots of free tutorials on our website. We've got um, all about different types of wire. We've got tips on wire armatures. And um, we've got lots and lots of other free tutorials as well. So there we go. We've got now a set of hands. And I'm just going to wrap those again to the very, very last few fibres. And now we've got a set of hands and a set of legs. It's not going to be a six-legged mouse. I'll put one to the, that to one side. So you can see now that's how they fit into our little mouse here. So now we need to attach those arms and legs together. So the mouse inside the mouse is fully poseable. So you could have him flying along like super mouse. Or you can have him standing up like that so it's completely poseable inside so we're using that pipe cleaner inside the mouse and you need to fold over about a third of the pipe cleaner to about there and this part here this bend is going to become the nose of the mouse so you need to give that a real tight pinch so that it's a, a nice little mousy nose. And then we're going to start twisting these wires together. Now the, the temptation can be to grab one and start wrapping it around the other, but you very quickly run out of pipe cleaner if you do that. So to twist them around each other, if you put your finger on one part and push with your thumb on the other and twist them around like that. you should end up with a nice twist like that. So stop when just before you get to halfway along that shorter pipe cleaner. So this is going to be the nose, then you've got the head and the neck, and we're just at the shoulders of our mouse, believe it or not. So I'm going to take those um, shorter hands and I'm going to put them into the shoulder of the mouse. So it goes up in between those two bits of the pipe cleaner. Try and get it about halfway along between the two hands. And then you're gonna give it a really tight twist afterwards. And that's gonna help to hold that in place. And then you continue twisting those bits together as you go down the body of your mouse. So you've got to leave about two centimeters of your um, pipe cleaner so that we can do the same with the back legs. And don't worry if it looks like it's got a short body at this point, it, you, you're gonna bend the legs down so it, they become a lot longer when we've done that. 
okay. So I'm going to put the legs in again in between those the bend of the pipe cleaner and I'm going to just twist those bits together and if you've got anything left there you can bend it up against the body of the mouse tuck that out the way and there you have your mouse kebab just going to head over to the live chat see what's cracking on there I hope I'm not going too fast for everybody on on um, here and you've all got your arms and legs wound up. Um, I keep getting messages come through from all sorts of people who are watching that I didn't know were watching, so I'm trying not to be too shy now. <laughs> Alicia, mask you up. That's great. I'm in love with your Australian merino, Maya Lan. A dream to felt with. Yeah, we love it. It's such a lovely soft wool. Perfect for little soft mice. And Maya Line, I have no idea which celebrity to go for yet. I'm excited though. Yes, we are too. We can't wait to see who you're going to make. I'm thinking with the glasses, maybe a Harry Potter mouse. Laura, some dark brown curls. Do you do them? We do. So these are our brown blue faced Leicester curls and they're really, really lovely um, dark curls. And um, I know Alicia's got a certain celebrity in mind for these. No, actually it was Emma, <laughs> which I think looking at them would be absolutely perfect. But I'm not going to say who it is so that, that don't ruin the surprise. OK, so hopefully we'll caught up with what I got to and I'm going to head back on over. Okay, so we've got our mouse kebab ready. And the next stage is to start fattening up our mouse. So we're gonna add layers of wool and we're gonna build up the body and the head at the same time so that the, they're not two separate parts. If you do the head and then the body, then they, when you bend it, you end up with this kind of um, detached <laughs> head look, which is not a good look for your mouth. So we're gonna do a few layers on the body, then work our way up to the head um, if you do more layers at the base of the head, you end up with this lovely um, triangular shaped head. So that's one of the things that's going to define this as a mouse and not some other kind of little rodent. So you want to try and aim for that lovely triangular shape. And when you get to the nose, you can do really tight layers around the nose um, and then work your way back down again. Lots of layers at the base of the head, back onto the body. And then you do have to do a couple under his um, legs cover up what's going on there because it can sometimes look a bit painful <laughs> so I'm going to take some of that wool so last time we were using very very thin layers um, this time you 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 want to build up a lot of bulk quite fast so we can use slightly um, thicker pieces and we start in the middle there you can bend the arms and legs slightly to take them out of the way and then um, keep winding the wool as you did before so remember always turn your um, mouse in the same direction so when it's cooking on that kebab roast um, you want it always to turn in the same direction and i i remember that by holding the tail if you always hold the tail end and and turn it in a certain direction um, you won't forget so i'm always turning away from me over the top and away from me so i've got a few layers on the body there I'm going to just go over the arms and onto the head. Build up a few layers at the base of the head. So I'm starting to make that triangular shape by building up those layers. My wool's just broken there, so I'm just going to add that over the top and carry on going. You can be a little bit more rough and ready with the um, head and body because we're going to stab it into shape afterwards. So if you've got any fluffy bits or any bits of wool sort of coming away, don't worry about them. We're going to we're going to stab into those later. So 
So just a few really tight layers at the nose. And then always make sure you're turning to the very, very last bits of your wool. So they start to look quite funny at this stage. So I'm going to get a bit more wool. So um, I'm fattening up the mouse a little bit more. And I thought while I'm doing that, maybe you can have a little um, look at some of the way that other mice are made. So you can see the dormouse there, he's sleeping. He's got um, a pipe cleaner. Again, the pipe cleaner is showing for the tail. So we just leave that blank, that lovely pink pipe cleaner. We don't wrap it with wool or anything like that. And the same on the dormouse. He's just got one of our, it's a slightly thicker pipe cleaner. One of our dormouse pipe cleaners. And um, you can leave that showing and it makes a lovely fluffy tail for the dormouse. And the dormouse has got sleeping eyes. So the eyes are just a tiny little wisp of wool felted in a line to make them look like they're closed. So I've done a few more layers on the body here and just going onto the head. So you just work your way over the shoulders and onto the head again. So don't forget to keep going from one to the other and back again. And you can start to think about how you might be accessorizing your mouse. So as I say, we have um, tutorials on our website for lots and lots of ideas, like the little waistcoats. Um, one of our um, artists, Kim Smith, has taken that waistcoat idea and added sleeves to it and makes the most amazing little jackets for her creatures. Tailored jackets, how's that? Um, we love our sort of small world things and we, we have um, all sorts of accessories like the skis, we have little um, wooden plant pots. Um, we even have little shoes if you want your mouse to be wearing clogs, like in the um, nursery row. And then you can make all sorts of scenery for them to go with. So imagine a little mouse pin cushion or um, I saw a mouse earlier that was um, poking into a, a this wasn't a real mouse, by the way, it was a needle felted mouse, but poking into a, a hole in the, in like a knot in the tree trunk, a piece of wood that someone had found um, as a decoration. And that was quite funny. So maybe you've got something perfect at home that you could use to accessorize your mouse. So I'm getting this sort of triangular sausage shape now. I'm just going to switch back. So you're aiming for this nice fat triangular head, probably needs a little bit more on the head. You have to make sure there's something to um, stick the eyes into basically, so they don't come out the other side of his head. So I'm just fattening up that back of his head, a little bit more on the body. And then we can bend him into shape. So you've got a much bigger mouse kebab now. And now you need to bend him into shape. Once you've bent him into shape, you might find that you need to add um, little layers over any bits that get um, exposed. It's often at the back of the head there. So if I bend that down, you can probably see there's a bit of a hole there. So I can just add a bit more wool over there. So I'm bending the head down. I'm bending the arms down so they're a bit more of a natural position. You can always have them holding something as well. And because the arms are these little loops, they have a little loop. You can actually use that to help you attach things as well. So we make these little wire balloons and you can put the wire through the, see if I can catch that, through the loop of the hand. A little bit blurry there bend it round and that helps the mouse to hold the balloon. It's quite fun. I'm going to take that off so I'm not going to be able to stab my mouse anymore. So you've bent his arms into a more natural position and then you bend his legs down. 
so my <laughs> mine looks a little <laughs> bit funny at the back there so I'm going to add a little bit more wool and I'm going to add some behind the head he's got a few issues there so I've bent the legs down you bend the tail up and at this point just before I add that extra wool I'm just going to check that he stands so there's a sort of tripod that gets formed between the two feet and the tail and he should stand up yay <laughs> so that's the first test done you can also um, bend up his little feet make little toes for him So it looks like he's standing on tiptoes. It's easiest if you've got a pair of pliers, but you can do it by hand as well. So he's on tiptoes. So that's all the bending done. And he still stands up, so we're doing good. And I'm just gonna fill in that funny looking <laughs> bit around. His... Well, I shouldn't really be showing that on camera, should I? It's private for his little mouth. don't know about you but once I make something then they sort of become alive and I, I have trouble leaving them behind at work so I often take them home with me <laughs> so I'm just putting a bit of wool around his his little um, bottom there and close your eyes well you haven't got any so you're all right little mouse I always put the eyes on last because I Feel like I can't stab them once they've got eyes. But I know some, there's some people who make the heads first, which is, um, I don't think I could do that. <laughs> Have them looking at me while I stab away on them. So wrap that wool around his bottom and I'm just stabbing that all into place. And you can see the, the felting needle, it's those, if you've not seen a felting needle before, it has these little notches on the needles. I get to show focus. You can just about see those little notches on the needles. They catch the fibres as you push the needle in. So they don't pull them out, they're pushing them in. And as they go in, they tangle together with the other fibres and they, they lock together and form a felt. So as the needle stabs in, all of those fibres disappear. And that's the magic of needle felting becomes smaller and tighter and firmer as you work so if you want to give your mouse a six pack you can create that definition with your felting needle if only it were that easy in real life so I've put that wool under his bottom there I'm going to do the same behind his head just create a little wad so what I'm doing is just pinching the fibers laying them on top of each other in in different directions and then i'm just going to add that whole piece over the neck of the mouse remember we had that sort of <laughs> he had a bit of a hole there we're going to just fill that in with the wool so by um, laying the bits of wool on top of each other you can really create a very seamless finish once it's felted on so you won't be able to tell where that where the old wool started and where the new new wool goes on now if you're making these mice at home you might think how much do i have to stab this mouse and that answer is it's really down to personal preference as long as there aren't bits hanging off him you know he doesn't look like he's going to be losing some of his fur anytime soon then he's stabbed enough but some people like to make these absolutely rock solid which, if you like doing that, you'll love this tool. Um, so really, yeah, it's personal preference. Often if I'm making a fluffy animal, I often leave it much more softly felted. So if you're making a big sort of fluffy cat, for instance, you might choose to leave the wool um, more softly felted. If you were creating something to that's going to get a lot of wear and tear, like a brooch, you might make want to make it a lot more firmly felted but if it's just like a picture that's going to go in a frame it doesn't need to be too firmly attached so i'm just stabbing all over the mouse tucking in all of those loose fibers 
and anywhere that looks like isn't quite joined on properly. Tucking them all in and there we have a kind of, well, if it gets to the stage where it looks like an albino mole, you're doing well. <laughs> That's the stage before it becomes a mammal. So the, remember I said about that triangular head shape being the um, part of what it makes it look like a mouse. Don't worry if it doesn't look like a mouse still, if, even if you've got that triangular head. The next thing that makes it look like a mouse are those big ears. So you've never seen a mouse without big ears before. And um, once you put those on, then it definitely becomes a little mouse. So we're going to make those ears now. I'm going to use my earth mat, wool mat. Now these are really, really brilliant for creating ears and flat pieces. They're, they're, it's a really dense wool um, surface, which means that you can really push hard with your needle and, and create a really nice flat felt for the ears. So you need to take two pinches of wool. Um, if you take a massive pinch, you end up with massive ears. If you take a tiny pinch, you end up with tiny ears. So just bear that in mind. And you're going to fold each pinch in half. So imagine it's like a circle. I'm going to fold it in half. And then I'm going to fold it now into quarters. So I'm just folding that part into a quarter. And you end up with a very sort of smooth, almost um, angular edge there which we're going to make more rounded as we felt and then on the other side you end up with all these loose fluffy fibers now these are brilliant to attach the ear to the head so we want to keep those fibers loose and fluffy and we want to felt the kind of folded rounded part of the ear so i'm going to lay that on my mat this is the part where i usually stab myself so sorry for any swear words So you can see as I stab, it, those fibres really get pushed against that dense wool mat and that really, really helps to very quickly felt down those um, fibres and it starts to make a felt almost straight away so I can't now really undo that or pull that apart. And I've felted this side so I'm going to turn it over and felt the back. And this time I don't push so deeply with my tool. I don't want to push all the fibres out to the other side and have a kind of fluffy, hairy inside of the ear, front or back of the ear. I'm just pushing them just so they just go into the ear and tuck away. So there's one little ear and then I'm going to do the same with the other. So imagine it's a circle, fold it in half and then fold it into a quarter and then felting that bent part and leaving those other loose fibers unfelted, loose and fluffy for attaching. So if you were making cat ears, you could um, keep that pointy bit and really accentuate it as you, as you felted. But because we want to make mouse ears and they're a little bit more rounded, you can sort of pull them into shape, round them off a little bit. And then a little tip if you want to get really smooth edges on these ears. So at the moment they're a little bit fluffy around the edges there. If you take your felting needle, this is for adrenaline junkies only because you're using your needle very close to your hands. Pinch the ear in between your thumb and finger. Take your felting needle and put the point past your fingers. That's the key to not stabbing yourself. I don't know if you can see that very well, but the point is just past my fingers and I'm just going to push those fibres. I'm working around the edge of the ear and push those fibres into place. And you'll see that it very quickly starts to make a much more solid edge there. This bit hasn't been done. So I'll just do that other side as well. And you can use this to help you shape that rounded shape a little bit further. The 
same on this one so putting the point of the needle past your fingers tucking those fibers in and I'm going to turn the ear over and do the other side in, in the same way the, the other part of the ear so you end up with two quite rounded little ears ready to attach to our little mouth So the ears of the mouse are, are, can be really quite expressive. So if you want to have a kind of a, a sleepy mouse, you can put the ears quite low down. He looks, let's see if I can show you this. So he looks a little bit more kind of sleepy and dozy, like maybe he's just woken up from his nap. And if you put the ears on the top of the head, he looks really kind of, alert like he's just seen a massive piece of cheese that he's very interested in and it's giving it its full attention so you can really play with these and um, if you're creating characters you can sort of use the position of the ears to help give the mouse some of that character so the next thing to do with those ears once you've decided on the position is to obviously attach them so we're going to use those loose fluffy fibers I'm going to put some of the fibers to the front of the ear and some to the back like that so there's the ear in the middle and there's some fibers going to the back and some to the front and I'm going to lay that on the head of the mouse so if you have three hands it really helps at this point but because none of us do you have to just make the best of it so I'm holding the ear on and you can pinch the ear a little bit as you attach it so it has a little bit of a um, like an ear hole he's listening carefully or she and I'm just stabbing those loose fibers in so that some of the fibers were going to the front so I'm stabbing those in and I can turn the mouse round and stab the ones at the back in So you can see you can kind of shape the ear a little bit as you attach it so that's quite handy if you make one ear slightly bigger than the other you can you can shrink it down a little bit as you attach it by actually felting through the ear a little bit as well so we'll attach the other one and see where we're at so spreading those loose fluffy fibers out some to the front and some to the back like that lay it against the head and same on this side so I'm just pinching it a little bit to make that ear shape and stabbing those loose fibers in if you always stab right at the base of the ear so always around here all of those sort of pink fibers will disappear underneath the ear so that you don't end up with sort of a pink streaky mouth like a bit of streaky bacon so you can see now he looks quite alert doesn't he and if I wanted to shrink that ear down a little bit or shape it a little bit more I can just run my needle through the ear as I attach it even them out a little bit so there we go we've got his ears on and we're getting very very close to having a finished mouse so the next step is just to make sure that you've got that head ready for the eyes so if you feel you need to add any more wool or to shape the face anymore now is the time to do it and once the eyes go in that's kind of it for shaping the face I'm just giving him a little stab all over. Um, if you're squeamish, look away now. The way you're going to get those pointy gluing eyes in, they have a, a round end, whoop, a round end like that, and then they have a, a stalk behind, and the stalk is what goes inside the mouse's head. Um, but the end of that stalk is blunt, so sometimes it's easier to make a hole through the head of the mouse and this is where the painful looking bit comes in you're going to take 
the um, felting needle and you are going to push that through the mouse's head <laughs> all the way in there we go and um, if, as if that wasn't enough you give it a good old wiggle just to make sure I'm wiggling that felting needle and when I take that out you should see a nice little hole there for the eye to go straight in and there we go and as soon as you add those eyes they just jump to life a little mouse is born I better give him another eye so same again take your felting needle the eye is about halfway between the nose and the ear so if you imagine a line put your eye halfway between the nose and the ear and when you push your needle through you aim sort of at the back of the other ear that gives you a good angle for your eye and a little tip when you're making creatures if you make um if you're making a predator creature they always have the eyes on the front of their head so they can look for their prey and if you're making a prey creature like a mouse something that would normally be eaten by a predator they tend to have the eyes on the side of the head because they need to keep an eye out in all directions <laughs> for those predators. So, you now need to glue these eyes in so they, they will fall out if you don't glue them in. You're going to take your glue, put it behind the eye while it's in the head and just give it a little squeeze. So this is a just a strong um, PVA glue, it dries very quickly and it dries clear. So if there's any excess, like I've got a little bit there, um, it will dry clear, so don't worry. And a little tip for making your ears the right size for your mouth is to fold them up first because um, often it can be easy to make these ears quite big. If you fold the ears first into the quarters and then sort of hold them against the mouse, you get a good idea of how big they're going to be. So I'm just going to wipe off that excess um, glue there. And there we have it, little mouse. <laughs> um, I should have warned you at the start, uh, making these mice is very addictive. Um, we, we have a customer, well, we have several customers who've made over 100 mice. <laughs> so um, don't blame us if you now can't do anything else but make mice. They are very addictive and they're so, so fun to personalise. So you, you will have no end of fun creating characters. You could maybe create one of your f friend who's into gardening or golf or weightlifting. There was a weightlifting mouse once with abs. That's where I got the idea. And um, yeah, I just hope that you really enjoy making these mice. And um, yeah, send us photos. So we have a Facebook group, Everyone a Maker. Um, you can join that and share your makes. We have a happy place forum on our website. And um, we are also running a Twitter competition, so you can make a celebrity mouse. So make a mouse and accessorize him like a celebrity. Um, perhaps you could make a Harry Potter mouse with glasses and a, and a little scarf, or you could make um, here's one I made earlier. So uh, Johnny Vegas is going to be on Taskmaster. So here's my little Johnny Vegas mouse with his stubble and his Johnny Vegas hat, he always wears one of those. And he's gonna be on Taskmaster, which is a TV program where they make celebrities do these hilarious tasks. So he's got one of his tasks that he's holding in his hand. You need to post it to Twitter. So with this mouse, I would tag at um, Johnny Vegas Real, that's his um, Twitter name. You need to tag at the makers. And one of your hashtags needs to be makers mice. And don't forget that um, makers has two S's, so one for me and one for Steffi, who's on holiday this week. Um, yeah, send and if you are not on Twitter, then send us your mice photos and we will post them for you. You can um, repost your photos if it, it doesn't get many tweets, because the aim of the competition is to get as many 
retweets as you can um, you can always um, repost your photos so start thinking about your celebrities who you might want to accessorize who might be um, good to have lots of fun little things on their mouse and post your photos and um, let's have fun in August with our mice thank you very much for watching we've got loads more free tutorials at www.themakers.co.uk and um, thank you very much bye bye I'm just going to head over to the live stream and say bye bye there Oh my goodness, there's so many comments. <laughs> I can't read all of these. But I will have a quick scan through. Steffi's much better at this bit. The faith is singing the nursery rhyme with the mouse with clogs on. <laughs> Debs loves the balloon. Oh, Diane, that was your first record you ever bought. <laughs> and you've still got it. That's probably worth some money. Get it on eBay. Mo's been stabbed, <laughs> stabbed a lot during this. <laughs> and um, Alicia's got three of the mice on Twitter now in the competition. Woohoo! So if you go onto Twitter and search for hashtag makers mice, you should see all the competition entries so far. Sorry, I'm really struggling to see these with my contact lens. I think I need to, a trip to the opticians, or maybe I can make myself some little glasses. <laughs> oh. Well, it looks like you've all been chatting away a lot. Oh, ideas for the wooden flower pots would be great, please. Um, you could use... Oh, have we got the raid Steffi's jars? Here we go. If you've got some of these, these are our dyed Leicester curls, green Leicester curls. I don't know how well you can see those there. They are amazing for um, putting it into little uh, floral displays. So you could just bundle those up into a little ball, tiny little ball like that. In fact, that's what's been used on this toadstool. And then you can use little tiny little wisps of wool for the um, flowers. So if you've got something like our fairy mix, definitely had a piece yesterday but I've no idea where it is um the fairy mix is really good it's got really fine fibers in it and you can just take tiny little wisps roll them up um Steffi discovered this when we made our blue tip wreath roll them up and um stab them into your greenery and then you can make a tiny little thing like that and put it in the plant pot and that will look amazing um Oh, Carol, good question. Can you enter more than one celebrity mouse? Yes, you can. You can enter a hundred if you want to. <laughs> the aim is to get the most retweets. So if you um, if you want to make a hundred and post them all, then we are very happy for you to do that. And the competition runs until the end of August. So get making your mice. Oh, Mo, I love making the mice so addictive and so much fun. I love trying to make clothes, etc. I ain't a good seamstress. <laughs> oh. And then Deb says he needs a monkey mouse. I think that might be um, for Johnny Vegas. He does need a little monkey. Maybe someone can make him one. <laughs> oh. Well, thank you so much, everybody, for watching. And I um, uh, really appreciate the support during my first live stream. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, we've got the next one is on Thursday at 3 p.m. Thanks, Alicia. I've got my notes here. We're making seahorses. So that's at 3 p.m. And also yesterday I had a little practice and I made um, the shell tutorial. I know there were some people waiting for the shells. So there's a tutorial how to make these, which should be uploaded in the next few days. So maybe before the seahorses or maybe after depends how well Emma goes. So um, thank you very much for watching and I will see you on Thursday. Thank you. Bye bye.